Hey guys, it's your boy Sherwin. So Sarah and I just got back from a really long Japan trip where we were away for about 14 or 15 days and we got to explore five different cities. So we got to see a lot of cool stuff, we got to eat a lot of great food, we also spent way more money than we actually wanted to. But uh, as a result of that, I brought back some really cool stuff that I want to share with you guys today. So before that, if you like what you see and want to hear more about what I've been up to, please hit the like and subscribe button down below to check out more of my stuff. So, let's get to the haul. One of the first things that I really wanted to buy on this Japan trip uh, was a new Deba, specifically a Deba from Sakai City because we were heading up to Osaka and Sakai City is known for its knife making. It takes a village to make a knife worthy of the name. Retailers like Jiko oversee the marketing for the city's master blacksmiths and sharpeners who are famous worldwide for their skills. Sakai knives are made through careful division of labor. First, they're hand forged and assembled, then they're sent to a sharpener for finishing and polishing. Sakai Jiko is an example of a homegrown Sakai brand that's killing it in the 21st century. The Jiko showroom is understated and modern, and the staff are really helpful, even if some things do get lost in translation. There were so many beautiful blades on display, I wish I could have brought them all home. Walking around Jiko, listening to the sound of grinding wheels in the finishing workshop, you get a real sense of what a well oiled machine this city must be. So I'm going to show you guys the knife that I actually came back with. And this baby is the reason why I didn't have enough money to buy all the fishing tackle I wanted to. Let's check it out. What's wrong with this box? Here we go. So guys, check it out. This is the knife that I bought. It's a 210mm Deba in white number 2 steel, otherwise known as, uh, what is it, Shirogami? That's right, Shirogami or Shiroko. So after a lot of prodding and a lot of mistranslation and a guy who wasn't too clear about what I was saying, uh, we managed to find an understanding and he pulled one of these out. So Deba knives fulfill a very specific purpose, uh, they're used for breaking down fish. Now why do people use these to break down fish? Because if you were to use your dinky little kitchen knife right, with a really thin blade stock, uh, you probably have a nice fine edge but you won't have enough plowing power to go through fish bones and things like that. Now the reason why Debas are designed this way, you see with a really thick spine and the taper, this is to make sure that the knife stays nice and thick and strong and stout and you got enough plowing power and heft to get through the fish bones when you're breaking them down. Now I needed one of these because the Debas that I had on hand, they were a little too small and I was struggling a lot when I was trying to break down slightly bigger fish with them. So yeah, uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to get one of these from Sakai City because first of all, they don't have Deba knives of this size here in Singapore. Second of all, even if they do, they're not of the same quality. Uh, this was actually made of, this is actually made of white number two steel. So white number two steel, right, is a very, very fine structure, very, very hard, very pure Japanese steel. And uh, it's quite hard to find affordable versions of this. I mean, I paid something like 600 Singapore dollars for this, but uh, I mean, you could get them for slightly more, but this one in particular was special to me because it was from Jiko. So the next thing that I wanted to get were these. Now these are the Aneron Varnish C6 pills. I know Varnish, Japanese names, you know how it goes. Uh, these are actually some of the best C sick pills or air sick pills or general motion sickness pills that money can buy and these are only available in Japan. Uh, we've got like a little supply chain of them here in Singapore where people bring them in and they sell them for marked up prices. The reason why they do that is because it's really just that good. Like you could pop one of these and stick yourself in a washing machine and you'll probably come out with a straight head, you know. Uh, these four boxes represent a very small fraction of the number that I actually bought because every time I make it to Japan, I make it a point to buy as many of these as I can without looking like a drug smuggler. Uh, the reason for that is, you know, since I had my ear operation, I've had a bit of an imbalance issue and uh, without these, there's no way I'm making it on a boat to go fishing in the southern islands, much less in anywhere else, you know. One of the other things I picked up while I was on a trip was something I've been looking for for a very long time. These babies. So these are actually the Zeal Le Man, I think they call them. 
So I've been eyeing this model in Singapore for a really long time, but unfortunately I couldn't find one for the right price. You know, so while I was in Japan, we got to check out the Zeal store, and I managed to pick up one of these for a relatively affordable price. And uh, I actually sent them off to go and get some lenses made. These are Zeiss sport lenses. Quite happy with them, and I look forward to using them for my trips. I'm going to see if this actually helps me in any way, because it's been a while since I last had a pair of good quality polarized sunglasses. Japan is one of my favorite places to go tackle shopping because there's just so many tackle shops. I mean, fishing is one of the most popular hobbies and the statistics say that something like 1 in 10 Japanese people enjoys the hobby. And you can see it, like everywhere you go, all the tackle shops that we went to, it's not just old people or like psychos like me going in there to shop. There's a whole bunch of, of young people that look relatively normal and well-adjusted browsing the shelves. Now. I like to go to Japanese taco shops because of the variety and uh, when we were on the trip, we got to check out some of them. Stepping into most Japanese taco stores is a sensory overload for any self-respecting angler. The sheer volume of gear available is a little mind-boggling as the Japanese have figured out how to make the best tools for nearly every species of fish imaginable. Want to go after tiny fish in mountain streams? Check. Jigging for cutlass fish in Osaka Bay? Check. Giant swim baits to chuck at bass? Check. Maybe a new PE 12 bow slayer for your next popping trip to Oman. Aisle 4, right next to the 200 pairs of rock boots. It's no accident that you'll find a million things you want to take home with you, even if you have no idea what you're going to do with any of them after. Japan is truly the thinking angler's paradise. Lyors wise, full retail isn't really the way to go. The prices at the stores in Osaka were around 20% higher than the prices we pay back home in Singapore. The trade-off of course being the much wider variety and selection of colours available. Here's a tip. Look out for the discount bins, promotions and coupon sales. Some of these might slash up to 60% off the sticker price and it's not all from the bottom of the crap barrel. You often find some really good deals on some really really useful gear. There is of course the hassle of getting your new purchases which might sometimes mean a 7.5 foot one piece rod home. Most of the bigger stores can do flat rate shipping and it would be a good chance for you to witness first hand the wonders of Japanese packing technique. My favourite tackle shop of the trip would have to be Ban Ban which you've been watching me walk through for a while now. This space is emblematic of the maturity of Japanese retail and the kind of zeal the Japanese have for the sport of angling. It's a bright, airy space with fully stocked shelves bristling with thousands of ways for you to blow your holiday budget. Banban -Ban is on the 7th floor of Ling Sumeda, an upmarket retail building right smack in downtown Osaka and eats up almost half the level. Just taking a casual browse is an hours long proposition and the layout is sensible showing off new trends and old favourites with equal prominence. And it also makes every possible genre of the sport feel not just included but celebrated. Now, each community's anglers have a comfortable range of specialties, but it seems that the Japanese have made an art out of that kind of diversity. And you'll be able to find something you've been searching for your whole life the second you turn your shoulder. Remember, this is coming from a guy who lives in a country where JDM tackle is readily available. Even if you've got a casual interest in the sport, a visit here will make you feel things, my friend, and ignite a little flame somewhere in the deepest recesses of your heart that make you want to run straight to the water. One of the first things we ended up picking up from the taco shop was this. Uh, this is the RGM Rooster Gear Market by Jackal. Uh, the RGM Spec 3, I think it's called. Yeah, that's right, it's called the Spec 3. So what this is, is it's a little pocket pole rod uh, used for something called K-reel fishing. We'll get into that later. Now, what really struck me about this is because look at it, man, it looks cool. Usually pole rods aren't exactly on this end of the cool spectrum, you know? Pole rods are kind of dumpy looking and functional. But I thought this one was really cool. It's got this cool, like, uh, milled aluminum cap. You can see it. And it's got this great color and a really comfortable handle. And I think best of all is it comes in this nice little padded slip case. Now, Sarah's been trying to convince me to stick this in my everyday bag, but I'm not sure how people will react to me carrying around a pole rod all the time, but we'll see. Uh, one of the things that we kept seeing coming up in the tackle store catalogs that we were looking for but seemed to be out of stock everywhere was this. This is the Nissin Pocket V3 Mini, and this is really cool. So what this is, is it's a very, very short, compact, 
and pocketable pole rod. Uh, it's used for kario fishing as well. And uh, what's cool about this is you see this little size here. It's so short, right? It this thing actually extends to four point five meters, and it's not it's not unwieldy at all. It's actually really really comfortable. I've tried this out. And uh, we were looking for this for quite a while. Finally, we found it on our last day of tackle shopping. I think we were at Ban Ban at Umeda. So we decided to pick one up and I plan on using this for some of my fishing locally too. So the other rod that I picked up while I was there was this, the Nissin 450ZX 2-Way. Now, I don't know how to read these characters, but uh, from what I gather, this is one of the more popular k rod models that they have there. The reason why I specifically sought out this one was because this is a much stiffer, much more powerful pole rod style rod than the other two that I got. Uh, I wanted to use this for Tenkara fishing here in Singapore. Now Tenkara fishing is where you use a fixed line and you generally use like a very light fly. Uh, locally our predators prefer fish. They, their prey is primarily fish forage so we need to use bigger things like clouser minnows and streamer minnows and things like that and I just didn't think that the normal tenkara rods that they had was going to cut it um, now this one is really popular in Japan because of its action like it's a much stiffer rod without being too stiff now what I say when too, what I say what, what I mean when I say too stiff is most of the Chinese rods that we get here in Singapore you either have a very soft one that goes all the way down into the butt or you have a very hard one that's stiff all the way into the tip and there's no in between now this particular one is stiff but it's got enough pulling power to stop most fish but at the same time it's got that nice responsive tip that really helps me to get the flies going so over the course of the next few months i'm going to be trying this one out and i'm going to try and see if i can if i can adapt it to our local context and try and do a bit of tenkara fishing with it now here's a fun one that I just knew I had to get. This is the Agam Shorty. Now why it's called the Agam Shorty, it's pretty self-explanatory. Now this rod was actually designed for sort of shoreline rock fishing in Japan, where you just dangle like a little weighted hook into the rock and you jig it up and down. But uh, you know, it's it's just so fun. I mean look at it, this thing is ridiculous. It, it's, it's as short as my forearm. And, and it's a fully functioning rod. I mean, you got you got decent quality guides on it, nice fit and finish, and I don't know, I, it's just a, such a fun rod. Like, I just had to have it. Like, I don't even know what I'm gonna do with it, but I had to have, I had to have one of these. And I know it's a bit of overkill sticking this reel on it, but you know, it's fun. I mean, rules don't apply to things like this. Look at it. Now for my tenkara fishing, I had to actually get these lines in Japan because we can't find these here in Singapore. Like no one's interested in, in tenkara fishing here, at least as far as I know, it doesn't really have a following here. So I went specifically looking for these lines. There's two kinds here. This is fluorocarbon level line. So what we mean by level line is line that's the same thickness all the way through. Uh, this is tapered line so this is specially made for tenkara fishing it's a line that actually tapers towards the butt and gets thicker in the tip so what that means is when you're casting this line you got a slightly heavier heft at the front that will really help you to launch those flies all the way out now i think i'm gonna maybe get two whole lines out of this one and this one's 30 meters maybe i'll get about six lines out of it so i haven't really thought about what's going to happen when i run out of these because i pretty much swept up all the spools i could at all the fishing shops i could find them at but you know we'll see we'll see maybe if i really get into the whole tenkara thing i'm gonna have to find a supply chain to bring these back here now, these these are really important they look like tiny floats they are tiny floats but it's important for a reason I really love these little Japanese bite indicators because the ones that we get here are made of really crappy, like poorly molded, poorly molded styrofoam. Uh, these ones are styrofoam too, but just something about these Japanese bobbers makes them more long wearing. Like I've had some of these bobbers that I've held on to for about five, six years and they're still going strong when the ones over here from Singapore have all like disintegrated. So I went and stocked up on a whole bunch of these. Uh, these are super useful for all your nonsense bait fishing for tiny fish. I mean, I say I'm going to be doing a lot of tenkara with these rods, but really the most fun thing to do with them is just take them out, put a little hook, get a loaf of bread, and spend an afternoon catching as many fish as you, as you imagine you could, you know?
Last but not least, and this is a really important thing for anglers, sunblock. So this sunblock was something that Sarah and I spotted on the drugstore shelves. We'd heard a lot of buzz about it online. It's the Biore UV Watery Essence. That's SPF 50 plus and uh, PA 4 pluses. Now, most sunblocks are kind of icky. You know, you stick them on your face, you go out fishing, you sweat, you stand in the hot sun all day. And especially here in Singapore, it's kind of humid, right? Uh, it sticks, it really clings to your face and you feel like, uh, you feel really bad after a couple of hours. Now, I've been using this one since I got back and I've been, it's amazing. Like, it feels like regular skincare. You put it on your face and it just melts away into your skin and you forget about it, you know? But the, the amazing thing about this is it seems to just be waterproof. Like I've been sweating my I've been sweating my butt off out in the sun. And and it it does everything it advertises, it does. It's a sunblock. It's fantastic. Go buy one. So that's it for my Japan haul, guys. Let me know what you guys buy when you're in Japan. Or if you have any questions about any of the things I covered today, hit me up in the comments and let me know. Look out for part two of my haul video where we're gonna be trying out some of these things for real. And as usual, I'll see you guys around, catch you on the water.